Welcome to a new video about power electronics. In this example, we will continue with the boost converter where we see the discontinuous current mode operation. We will see step by step how we get to this situation. Also work out the calculation for that. And I'll also show you what kind of a graph for the inductor current and also other waveforms will be produced in this discontinuous current mode. Of course, we will work out everything in our calculations step by step and also verify these in MATLAB Simulink simulations. This is again our boost converter circuit and with a generic form. We have our switch here, which is ideal, and a switching frequency of 100 kilohertz. We have the other components. We also have the values for all the components in this circuit here. What we like to calculate is the average load voltage or output voltage. That's actually this, the out output current average io and we have the maximum and minimum inductor current so how much this current is in max and minimum values so let's see how we can calculate these values before we dive into the uh, equations and the analysis since this will be a dcm so discontinuous current mode i will prove that shortly the waveform will be different than in the continuous current mode for the inductor current there will be actually a waveform like so so it will go to a maximum it will actually then come to a zero level so it will not stay above zero so that is definitely a situation where you have discontinuous current mode for the inductor voltages this inductor voltage will have then the shape like so and we have a situation where the inductor voltage also will be zero because of the current here which is zero the diode current will have the similar shape as before, but it is now uh, chopped off more. So we have then only the part where the diode is active, which is this part, a smaller part than before. But let's see that in detail for the calculations. So in the solutions, first, we check the conduction mode. So in what kind of a mode we are operating. And for that, we can use the, the minimum required inductor value for the boost converter that is given by this formula you see here the duty cycle the load resistor and the switching frequency will determine that now we have a 0.4 the duty cycle we have our resistor which is 10 ohm and we have also our switching frequency 100 kilohertz so that means 7.2 micro will be needed minimally to stay in the conduction uh, in the in the continuous conduction mode so this is the minimum value for the inductor Okay, what we have is 6 micro. So L is 6 micro, that means this is less than the minimum what we wanted. So that means the inductor current must be discontinuous. So we are in the discontinuous current mode or discontinuous conduction mode. So using the volt second balance of the inductor, we can write the following equation looking actually at the graph. For the first part in DT, the voltage of the inductor is Vs. So you do actually Vs times the DT. And the next part is Vs minus Vo, and that part is then D1 times T. So this part is also uh, multiplied by the Vs minus Vo. And that will add up to zero. So this is the volt second balance if you do the integration for your inductor. Now, when you rewrite this and divide actually the T because that is not necessary here, so you get this expression, and you may now express the output voltage in terms of the input Vs. You get now a ratio which is also dependent on the D1 here, which was not the case in the continuous current mode. Okay, let's call this equation number one because we need it later, because we would like to calculate VO. So we need to also determine D1. So the only known here is D itself, not, but not D1. So average diode current will be calculated using this green graph and that can be then used use just geometry because you know it is always divided by the full period so 1 over t and times the area here and what is the area here it is actually one half times the d1t times the il maximum so the maximum diode current will all be also the maximum inductor current you cannot divide out the t here t here that will produce this and this will be then used as equation number two shortly now in discontinuous current mode, so in DCM, we have that the maximum inductor current will be also the peak-peak inductor current. And that peak-peak inductor current was given by this expression. So we can calculate that later and use this expression. Now call this equation number three. Now we can substitute this equation number three now in this equation number two, because IL max is now given by this, that will produce this. So you see here now the expression for the diode average current 
and that is now called equation number four. We also know since the diode average current will be also the average output current because the average uh, capacitor current is zero on average. So that can be said that the diode average is equal to output average current will be then VO over R. This is just Ohm's law. Okay, let's call this equation number five. Now then we have the following. We can say use now equation number four and equate it in equation number five. We have then one half d1 vsd over l times the switching frequency that's actually also here is equal to this v over r now we can now rewrite this and express d1 in other parameters we have this expression okay this is now equation number six now substitute the equation number six in the original equation equation number one where we want to calculate our output voltage then you have this expression Okay, now we're getting closer. We see already some VO and VS, but there is no D1 anymore, but we need to still figure out how we can solve this problem. Now we can now use algebra here, so we can say the numerator and denominator multiplied by VSRD, that's shown here. So it is a little bit better and also visible what's going on. We can divide out the VO and VS, so we can say, let's do this. So we do left and right, divide by VS, we get this expression. Now this is easy to follow, you can also do the following because I see this term, the second term here, and this term are exact same. So you divide actually here the fractions in a similar form as we do for in another formula. We have here the d squared vsr over this and this over that will be just one. So this is easily followable uh, to follow. And then we have the following expression which can be produced by Multiplying the left side and the right hand side by VO over S. So VO over S will be multiplied here and there. But since this will also need to be done for the left side, you get here a square. This will lose its VO and VS and this will get a VO over VS. Why do we do this? Now that can be recognized here better. If we put these two terms also to the left side, you get here an equation, which is a quadratic equation you can solve. You can produce this or see this as this ratio as an X. So you want to solve that and you can solve that using the formula for quadrat quadratic equation. Now solving for V over Vs, that is the ratio. We have this formula. Now this was exactly what we wanted because now we can see what the output voltage will be in term of the parameters here times the input voltage we have. What's interesting to see is if, for example, the L goes to very high values, this part is actually almost zero, and they get the square root of one, four, one over four, so that will be then a half, so half plus a half, so you get actually VO will be then VS, so it will be unity gain. So there are some conditions, limits in this, ex uh, in this equation. But let's calculate now using this formula what our average output voltage will be because we have now the necessary information we substitute here everything we have and also the 16 for vs so you just rewrite this you get now 28.13 volts okay that is the first uh, question for average output current is pretty straightforward using ohm's law because we know that it will be vo over r we know the vo we know r the resistor that will be then just 2.813 amps the maximum and the minimum inductor current, first maximum, now I said that is just the peak peak value of the uh, expression for the inductor current, then that is given by this formula, and we know Vs, we know the duty cycle, so that is all known, so that will be then 10.67 amps. Okay, the minimum inductor current will be zero, because we work in the discontinuous current mode, we have proven that in the previous discussion. Okay, now taking all the values we have determined because we have done now a b and c let's now look at the symbolic circuit this is the symbolic circuit i have produced for this circuit and we will also use the graphs here shown here in, on the scope in the next slide and also prove that this is indeed discontinuous and also check some values we have calculated okay let's go to the steady state value for the output voltage and output current this is the graph there are more graphs will be produced in detail in the comment slides shortly so you see the yellow one which is our load current and the light blue is a load voltage you see here the label and the values here in a table the label here says the load current is 2.822 amps which is close to what we have 
and the low voltage is 28.22 volts. Also very close to what we have calculated. So this is checked. The next one is about the peak peak inductor current. Now we have calculated the maximum and the minimum should be this one. So the peak peak will be also this 10.67 according to our calculations. Looking at this uh, red graph, which is our inductor current, and also from the table here, you see for label 1 and label 2 some values that are shown here, now depicted here in, in, uh, in larger view. And the peak peak here in this case is 10.61. So it's close to what we have calculated, so this is also checked. The next one is our peak peak inductor voltage. That's shown here in yellow and uh, in, uh, in green. The label 1 and the label 2 are shown here the maximum and the minimum. The maximum will be 20 or calculated as 16 here according to the calculation and also minimum will be then 16 minus 28.13 that is again to according to our calculations that should be minus 12.13 volts now if i look at the table here and also give the values here in larger view you see here it will be 15.99 volts close to what we have calculated here and it will be then minus 12.26 volts according to the label here it's also very close to what we have calculated so and the peak peak value here can be also seen here or here so it will be then 28.26 volts okay now the peak peak load voltage that is also important for our ripple in this case you can see that again in the table here now let's say label this also for the maximum and for the minimum you see here 28.26 volts and a 28.10 volts and the peak peak will be just 160 millivolt or 0 0.16 volts we haven't calculated what the value should be that is not done but we see here there is a, a ripple of 0 0.16 volts and that determines really the capacity and also other parameters in our circuit the next one is our peak peak load current that is the yellow one we see here again the table and the values here the maximum and the minimum and the peak peak will be then 16 milliamps now the final one is our peak peak capacitor current that is given in pink here or dark uh, pink you see here the again the values in the table and also the maximum and the minimum and you see also the peak peak value here which is insane as for the inductor current peak peak which is also the maximum current so you see actually that this is indeed confirming the peak peak of the capacitor current is the same as the maximum inductor current all right, this was our example considering the boost converter using the discontinuous current mode. We have calculated our parameters here in the calculations and also verified this in MATLAB simulating simulations. If you have any questions, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video.